Now, back in the days when we all used to live in caves and we didn't have fancy things like mobile phones and microwaves, and we all spoke Cornish, often the most important things in life were the least interesting. Yeah, dentists, um, contraception, traction control, they're all really important, they're just not much fun. Now, it's very similar in the car world as well. When you think of MPVs, diesels, estates and pickups, they conjure up images of nothing but pure boredom. Thing is, Ford have been on a bit of a roll recently, and what could have been their dullest car has actually turned up and completely broken the mould. Of course, I'm talking about the Ford Fiesta. Now, we're both 32 this year, the Fiesta and I, and while I've grown old in the usual way, getting slowly heavier and slower, the Fiesta hasn't. <laughs> The new Fiesta isn't growing old gracefully, because it's not growing old at all. It's lighter, faster, more efficient, and it looks much better than the slightly dull model that went before it. And therefore, you could just decide that this is the best car in the class, beats all its rivals, blah, blah, blah. But it's not that easy, is it? You see, the Fiesta's just a little bit different and actually has to be compared to things without wheels. Bear with me here. When Ford set out several years ago to design the new Fiesta, they decided that it should work for every market, be it America, Europe, or China. Now, they're a little out of practice at making a one-car-fits-all. The last time they did it was with the Model T. So, to make sure they got the formula right, they used inspiration from other types of products that have a global appeal. Things like the iPod. Now, they can't make these things fast enough, and they're as popular in Times Square as they are in Beijing. So if Ford wants to make a car that's as popular with young, trendy types across the world, it actually has to compete with Apple's finest. Mmm, touch screeny. So, let's start with the styling. The iPod is a hit from here to Timbuktu because it looks cool. And the new Fiesta ticks the box too. It's definitely got the same styling vibe as the Mondeo and the Focus, making it look like a smaller, rather than cheaper, alternative. It's the details that Ford seem to be getting right in their new generation of cars. Big lights, strong lines, bold design. If it's bland or blends in, they ain't interested. But don't worry, you don't have to have it in wee wee green if you don't want to. Here's a dash designed using, and I quote, mobile phone logic. OK, so it's a bit wacky and silver at first, but after a couple of hours in this car, I'm really starting to appreciate the amount of thought that's gone into it. All the main controls for the car are sort of here, and they're really intuitive and easy to use. Just down here, there's a, there's a little simple pocket for your MP3 player or your mobile phone, and it's next to the place where you charge it up and next to the place where you plug it into the car. There's even a little USB port there so that you can put some songs on a flash drive and just plug them straight into the car. thing is, this feels like a small car but with really big car equipment. There's also things like the, the capless fuel filler, the HMI human machine interface onboard computer thingy, the uh, push button start, there's knee airbags in here. The point is that you get the feeling you can conceivably downsize from a Focus without feeling that you'd also downgrade it. Finally, we come to the performance. The iPod is a small package, but packs a powerful 80,000 song punch. I can flick between Rage Against the Machine and Neil Diamond in a blink. Not to 60 songs in no time at all. The Fiesta, frankly, isn't so fast. This is the 1.6 litre TI VCT. It's got 118 brake horsepower and does 0 to 62 in about 9.9 .9 seconds. If you keep on going and assuming you're not being chased by the police or something similarly illegal, it'll do 120 miles an hour. So it's not that fast then, but it does feel like a bigger, more sophisticated car. If I'm honest, it feels a lot like my Mondeo, except easier to park. I'll tell you what, this steering is particularly impressive. It's electric power assistance, but basically it wakes up for more feel as you go faster. And in development, the Fiesta engineers basically did a lap of the earth, and then they did some more just to fine-tune this steering setup. 
it's weird. It, it feels nice and nimble when you drive quickly, but this has got a chassis that, that rides so well, it feels like a car with a much longer wheelbase. It's a really good balance. But it's also a super efficient version called the Econetic, with a 1.6 litre engine that pumps out just 99 grams per kilometre of CO2, which nips neatly into the lowest of the low tax bands. Do you want to know the best bit? This new Fiesta is actually a little bit cheaper than the outgoing model, and the insurance groups are either the same or a little bit lower, which means that it'll be cheaper to run both in terms of standing costs and fuel bills. So it's easy to use but stylish, it's got interfaces that make you smile, and it's luxurious but it's still faintly affordable. Am I talking about the iPod or the Fiesta? Well actually I'm talking about both. So a definitive verdict from Mr Tom Ford here who now officially loves Fiestas. Listen, it gets better. What you didn't see was that car was four up, four massive blokes in it, right. full of equipment, going down some of Italy's worst roads, terrible potholes, terrible cambers, and it rode beautifully. Really? Yeah. So it sets itself up then for a little sporty number, maybe an ST, an XR2i, or the RS Turbo. Well, it's funny you should say that because Ford reckons it has no plans for a hot Fiesta. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, but I still reckon there'll be one next year. It will be called the ST, and I reckon it will be brilliant. Right, that's it for this part. Here